Welcome back to my channel, White Girl Fresh, and some second, third impressions on some makeup that I've had sitting on my desk for a while. I'm going to attempt to talk through some products and stuff that I'm using because I literally have a table full of stuff that I've been sitting and wanting to talk about and some a brush, some lip products, just everything. We're gonna talk about everything. I look super pretty right now because I thought it would be a genius idea to go to the gym and then come home and do some makeup. So whenever you can get it in. So I kind of go back and forth on the idea of doing your brows first and then doing your foundation versus doing your foundation and then doing your brows. I think the benefit of doing your brows first is that you get the part that can take the longest done first but the annoying part about it is that then you have to like delicately dance around your eyebrows <laughs> when you're doing your makeup versus just like going ham and then doing your brows later. I'm gonna do my brows later. This No Pore Problem by Prime Essence and the texture is so different. It's very like loose. I mean, it literally dribbles down your face, but oh my God, it smells so good. I think I put on a little too much. Dab some of that out. So now that we've primed the face, priming isn't necessary per se, but it does make your skin a little tacky and I think it helps the makeup stick to it a little bit better. But if you just have a moisturizer that you like, you can use that too. I just rose. This is for you. I'm, I'm using the Rimmel Lasting Finish 24 or 25 hour breathable longwear foundation. When you take it out, the applicator, because it's not a doe fit applicator, it's got like a little ring in it. And so you just put it all over your face. This foundation has a really nice fresh smell. That applicator makes it really easy to put on. It's pre use my beauty blender to blend this in. I have a feeling in like a month or two, this is not, or not a month or two, in like three months, this color is not gonna be the right color. Cause I'm gonna be back to the really white girl fresh. I used to be super scared to like put foundation in my hair. Don't. <laughs> Don't be, don't be scared to get up in your hairline because then it looks like a continuation and then there's no line. I'm always like, no line. Sometimes my husband comes up to me and he's like, you got a line. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna use the Born This Way Too Faced Multi Sculpting Concealer in the shade Almond. This has a ton of product in it. I find that when putting on concealer, people like paint their face like all over, like almost completely coat it in concealer. And I have found that using a more gentle hand can benefit you when you're putting it on. I also don't put it up here because if you have wrinkles like me, it only accentuates them up there. Like I can already see my foundation setting in my head. You know, when I get that Botox money, that's where it's going right there, that, that line right there. So I'm just gonna blend this in. And if you have too much, it goes out here and it just looks like a lot. So then you just like jab it into the skin. But the goal is to keep your concealer right here. If I have redness around here, I kind of have redness everywhere. I'm one of those people where I could easily put concealer all over my face, but I don't want to because it just, it's not meant to be all over your face. It's meant to be lighter and on thinner skin but to provide coverage. I'll, when I put on liquid foundation, I like to set it. I don't wanna, I don't like looking like a china doll, but I find that when I set the foundation, it doesn't move and it doesn't crease as much. And especially around your nose, this is where like, if I'm touching my face, it's my nose because my nose is always runny and I have allergies. But if you don't touch your nose, your makeup can still move. And so I like to set it all over. And sometimes I'll use a brush I find that for doing it all over my face, I like to use a brush. So we're gonna go in with the Pretty Vulgar. I'm just gonna dab it all over. I like to dab and then swipe. And this brush is a Morphe R13 and it has a rose gold handle right here. It's really nice. I love Morphe brushes, love them. Maybe one day I'll do a video of my 
makeup tray stand. It's sitting right next to me and it has tons of stuff on it. No, I don't have drawers and towers full of makeup like a lot of people do, but I have a good amount. So I'm just setting the concealer. And I'm not a big fan of baking. I think baking is safe is for biscuits and cupcakes. I don't think it's for your face. And part of the reason I like to dab instead of swipe with the setting powder is that you can rub your foundation off. Now, technically I try to stay just like in the T-zone. But if you're feeling shiny and you just wanna cover some of it up, I feel like on my chin, I'm just like, I wanna be, I wanna have no wrinkles. I've given up on the thought of having no wrinkles on my head. I like to go like this. One thing about the Rimmel Concealer is that it is a little bit tacky on the skin, so the benefit of setting it with some sort of powder is that it sets the foundation, but also gets rid of that tacky feeling that you can have on your skin. And I just like this. And because I don't like to look super powdery for a long time, I'll spray one round of the matte finish spray here. You can never have too many rounds of this. Never. All right, so now we're gonna go in with the ColourPop Brow Boss. Stephanie, thank you for turning me on to this. I always like trying new brow products because I think you can never have too many. And I really like the kind that are like the small, it's not a pencil, but it's just basically like product in a small amount that comes out the top. Typically when I'm doing this in the morning before I go to work, it's like the thing that I need the most time to do. It, it always takes the longest because I just want them to be even and they never are. <laughs> so I just, you know, try my best, but I have a pretty good shape that's already defined and I just kind of follow it. But so I'm gonna do this off camera so you don't have to sit here listening to me do this for 15 minutes. And then I will talk about how easy this was. It, at first impressions, it, it, the color looks good and it's going on really nicely. You know that when you're doing your eyebrows that you have certain shapes that you like to use. So I'm gonna do this off camera and then come back. Okay, first impressions, obviously I haven't done both of them yet, but this was so easy. When you only have 10 or 15 minutes, this is good. It kind of looks natural too, because sometimes with these, you can get filling it in, looks like you're just coloring in a box, and this looks really natural, which I really like, so I'm gonna go finish and do the other one. Okay, we back. I have this issue with my face where this side always seems to look better than this side, and it's always true with my eyebrows. Like this one, I feel looks like perfect, and then this one, doesn't, and it <laughs> bothers me. But this is really nice. It's a little bit opaque. It's not super, it's pigmented, but it allows you to uh, to do brush strokes that make it look really natural, which is really nice. Like, I, I really like it. It's going in, it's going in the tower of makeup to be used many times over. So this Tarte palette, something you should know about this eyeshadow is that it smells amazing. It smells like candy, like, like fun dip. It smells like fun dip. I just put that all over my lid. That's just a nice soft pink. Not anything super dramatic because I love dramatic. But let's be real, people aren't wearing makeup that looks uber dramatic every day. We're wearing makeup to work, we're wearing makeup to happy hour, we're wearing makeup to friends, wearing makeup for fun. and. I I remember growing up, my mom and my grandma always used to say to me, like, you want your makeup to look like your face just amplified. And I I always think of that when I'm doing makeup now because I'm just like, yeah, I want it to, you still want to look like yourself. And I think if you find ways to put on makeup where you amplify your natural beauty and don't just cover it up, I think that's really cool. It's a really, it's, it's like a nice mauve tone. It looks really light in the palette, but it's really, really nice. Next, I'm gonna take this shimmer shade that's next to the pink. I 
and that pink and this color go really well together. Honestly, I feel like half the time with makeup, it's all on how you do it, not necessarily what it is. Like whether it's expensive makeup or whether you spent $2.99 at Target or the drugstore, it doesn't have to be the most expensive thing to look good. And it definitely doesn't have to be the most expensive thing to look good on you. Because when I started getting into makeup, I was like, there are some things you buy and you're trying, you're just like, oh yes, I get why this is totally worth the money. Other things you try and you're like, nope. I'm gonna go into this darker shade. It's the darkest shade in here. It's like a, a dark brown. I'm just gonna put a little on there. Bring that up. So I'm with this shade, take a big fluffy brush and just blend that corner. I am not the best dramatic eye shadow corner blender. Like, I don't know how it gets away from me, but it does. So if you're afraid to do stuff like that, my recommendation is go slow and have a, a makeup wipe handy. So if you're just <laughs> have to start over, you can. So I got a bunch of the ColourPop Super Shock shadows, which I'm obsessed with. I've had one for like a couple of years. Look at that thing. She is She's been used color I have is called Twitter Painted. <laughs> oh, baby references, they never get old. This color is pink with gold flecks. We're gonna take Twitter Painted, just put some on that brush, and put it right there. I like to bring it up just a little so that it doesn't look like you just plopped a dollop of makeup on the inside of your eye. It actually looks like it belongs there. Bitches be blending. This eyelash curler from Revlon. Everybody curls their eyelashes kind of the same, but the way I like to do it is I like to put it down on my eye where I want it to go and then lift and push. <laughs> so we're gonna use the Monsieur Big by Lancome. The brush tip on this is fantastic. I see people who put mascara on where they like blink into it. I don't get that. I can't do it. Maybe it's because I wear contacts and when I do it, it gets all over my contacts and I'm like, eh. that's a pretty face. Eh. So this mascara is really great because it, it coats all of your lashes. So it makes it look like you have a lot of lashes and it elongates them. So you're not gonna get super like dramatic on the first try, but the second go around you will. And one important tip with mascara is you wanna let it dry between each coat. Otherwise, it's just you're just gonna keep coating the same stuff and it's gonna, it's gonna come off. It has to dry in order to coat your lashes properly. And so once it's dry, when you put on the second coat, then it will actually add more drama and more volume. So we're gonna let those dry. I got a BoxyCharm Dose of Colors, which is in the color Merlot. So let's let's get crazy. Ooh, she dramatic. Some highlighters that I've really been loving. The Fenty Beauty. It's the Fenty Beauty Kilowatt highlighter. And this is in the shade Hustla Baby. What it looks like on my finger. Just gonna take a little and put it in the middle of my eyeshadow. Just adds a little something to the eyes. While this lipstick is almost dry, anytime there's red, so I don't want it to go anywhere and I feel like I always end up eating throughout the day and it ends up going like into the crevices of my skin a little bit. Theirs doesn't, but it still comes off a little bit. While we're letting that dry, we'll go back in. Another coat of mascara. I'm not gonna lie, I'm probably gonna curl them a third time. And if I don't like the way my lashes look, I just take one of these things and I comb them. Something I always forget, but I never go into my lower lash line with the makeup, so I'm going and do that now. I'm gonna use my favorite blush. This Cover FX palette is my ride or die, it's amazing. This color to contour and this color for my blush. These are great highlighters and 
These kind of act as like setting powders, but they've got a little bit of shimmer in them. They're really pretty. So contour is difficult for my skin tone because a lot of the colors don't look right. I kind of have a fair, medium, medium, fair skin tone, and I need like a light bronzer. But this one is really, really pretty. That's a good look, isn't it? Now we're gonna pop on a bit of that blush. Because contour, blush, and highlighter typically go in very close quarters together, they pretty much all overlap if you are if you have any sort of face dimension. So I love taking a big fluffy brush and just kind of blending them together where I put it on and I'm like, it looks like I have like zones, like the brown zone, the pink zone, and the light zone. So I just like taking a big brush and blending it all together. Bitches be blending. <laughs> and my other highlighter that I've been loving these days is by Artist Couture. And it is in the shade Summer Haze. Ooh, it is so pretty, the color. It is just amazing. It's gorgeous. Because highlighter can accentuate the texture in your face, and I'm 36 and I have lines right here, so, you know, you don't want to go full ham right here. I just like... Highlighter should be like pixie dust. It shouldn't be like paint. That looks pretty. And we are gonna put a little bit of gloss. This is the another Artist Couture. We're gonna use the Artist Couture gloss in Le Freak. It has a really interesting applicator. It's like triangle. And I'm just gonna dab. This on. This combination actually reminds me of Christmas. It's sick how gorgeous this is. So this is the final look. I can't believe that I came up, I came home and did this in like an hour. I kind of wish I had somewhere to go now. I really like the eyeshadow. I really like the highlighter. The foundation is still held up really well. This color combo is giving me Christmas vibes. I love it. So. If you have any questions, I'm gonna list all the products and the brushes in the description, so if that will be helpful. I hope you enjoyed this talk through, walk through tutorial. Until next time, keep it white girl fresh.